Well, now to a segment we like to call Infamous, where we catch up with the most notorious figures in crime history. Today, it's a colourful auto body shop owner from New York named Joey Butterfuco. Joey became a tabloid fixture in the early 90s when his teenage mistress, Amy Fisher, shot his wife in the face. Amy splashed on the cover of the Daily News as the Long Island Lolita, Joey public enemy number one. Now, 23 years later, Joey has a new life and a new wife. My name is Joey Botafuco. And if anybody knows that name, they're gonna have an idea of what it was tied to from 1992. That was like the one huge thing that happened in my life and I had no idea how to handle it. I was never involved with anything like that. Never involved with the media circus, uh, scrapes with the law, never, never, never. Joey Botafuco was a little boy at one time. I was born in New York in 1956. My dad's name was Casper, my mother's name was Louise. I was born into an auto body repair shop with a towing business. My father, was my hero, hands down. I didn't want to be anywhere else but with my dad. I had so much bravado, I thought I was untouchable. Made a lot of money, you know, had the big house, the fancy cars, the beautiful children, the beautiful family. When Amy came into the picture, I was full of piss and vinegar. Amy was never my girlfriend. She was never my girlfriend but she wanted to be. You know what it was? It was one gigantic mistake that I made in my life and it cost me a lot. I went up to her doorstep with a loaded gun in my pocket. I hit her on the back of the head and the gun went off. She fell on top of me on the ground. I tried to get her off of me, I hit her and I left, I ran away. My whole life at that point just went into slow motion and what I witnessed was horrific. I see Mary Jo strapped to a gurney on a helicopter getting ready to lift off the beach that was right next to my house. And the front of the house was all covered with blood. Why was that man not prosecuted for the use and abuse of a 16-year-old girl? Public opinion was against me right from the beginning, within the first two weeks. So anyway, anytime I ever left my house, even when I was with my children, or I had to just take a Mary Jo back and forth to the hospital when she got out, people would say to me horrible things like, you're a scumbag, you're a murderer, you tried to have your wife killed. People shot at me all the time. One time these bullets came past me, doof, 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 and they were going right through the glass in my business. Well, I'm not even gonna call it fame because I didn't run after fame. Fame is earned, fame is, you're a dancer, you're a singer, you're out there, boom, boom, you hit it, you're famous. This is infamy, infamy. Icon of the 90s, they call me. Imagine that. New York wanted to just stick it to me hard. They put me in the lockdown area with the worst killers on Long Island. One was Joel Rifkin. He's a pretty messed up guy. This case cost me and my dad, $1.7 million to defend. My dad helped me, I couldn't do it by myself. I think deep inside Mary Jo was willing to try and work it out and forgive me. We had a family, we had children, we had a marriage and she, was, she wanted to save that. If Amy Fisher did not shoot Mary Jo, would I be together with Mary Jo right now? I, I don't know, I just don't know. This one comes into my life, bringing a car into my shop and completely turned it right side up for me. I took his hands and I said, listen, from this point forward, live your life through the windshield, not the rear view mirror. When I think about how do people perceive me now after all these years, because of the way people treat me now, I think people see me as not that person back then. I evolved out of that and I survived. And we'll have more with the new Mrs. Butterfuco tomorrow on Crime Watch Daily. As for the other players in the true crime soap opera, Mary Jo Butterfuco remarried in Vegas. Amy Fisher was married in 2003 to get this, a former New York police officer. 
they had three kids before divorcing this year. Amy just bought a half million dollar house in Florida.